are entering Paraguay and this is the traffic from the Ponte de Amistad, the bridge of friendship. And now we have all the papers ready and we're waiting for a police escort to get us out of the city. The only way to enter Paraguay is crossing the 500 meters long Puente de Amistad, the Friendship Bridge. It is jam-packed with cars and pedestrians, so we managed to get an escort from the Brazilian Federal Police. They had the one car in front and one behind us, and everything went fine. On the Paraguayan side, we got the police escort to get us through the city, Ciudad del Este, until we were safely on the outskirts of the city. We very soon realized we had come to a very different and poorer country, with very different people. We met shy but friendly people and the first night we camped in the backyard of a rural country shop. Seeing a tailor by the side of the road, we decided to have made rain covers for our pack saddles. Total cost $3, and they served us well for the rest of the trip. Our first destination is the capital, Asuncion, about 350 kilometers away. There's only one road leading there, but it had for the most part 50 to 100 meters of grass on both sides, so it was good for riding. Even if it was a lot of garbage though. After being spoiled in Brazil for several months, we now had to carry our gear on the pack horses and find places to camp for the night. Every night. It was very hot and humid, so we took every opportunity to give the horses and ourselves a good bath. We very soon realized we were in a tropical country and every day we encountered and learned about new exotic fruits and vegetables. Things we had never seen or heard about before.
We were often stopped by people asking about what we were doing and where we were going. Here we were invited to a nice place to camp and to visit what they called the rodeo later. It turned out to be a different groups of riders parading their horses and showing off their equipment. And of course, a lot of booze and food. We also had to do a couple of obligatory rounds on borrowed horses to show off for the people gathered there. A big part of the Paraguayan population are indigenous, and most people speak both Spanish and Guarani, very often a mix of the two languages. Through the help of good contacts we made, we were welcome to stay with the military in Asuncion. Paraguay is in many ways a dangerous country, so we finally decided to buy guns. We bought a revolver 357 Magnum and a Winchester the same caliber. We got a gun permit to carry the arms in the whole Paraguayan territory. To prepare for the shako, we decided to take blood samples of the horses and we discovered that they were low on red blood cells and they had parasites. We therefore started a regimen with different vitamins over a couple of weeks. Sacamos todos y metemos. Primero la sopa que se cocinó, la sopa, y después eh, metimos las chispas, ¿verdad? Después las cámaras.
carne porque no se puede meter con la chipa la carne. Tatacuá. Tatacuá. Horno en castellano. Tatacuá en guaraní. Horno de barro. After four weeks in Asunción, we were ready to start our trip into the dreaded Chaco territory. Our good friend and veterinarian Toto Lopez brought our cargo the first day, and after that, we were all on our own. Chaco, often called the Green Hell, is a sparsely populated place known for its wildlife and severe heat and humidity. We very soon got first-hand experience with the fauna and the very few people that live up here. Chaco is known to have more than 60 species of snakes, 40 of which are poisonous. I killed the first one in our camp on day one. We soon had to get used to that there were always some insects crawling on us. They sting, they bite, they burn or they piss on you. I guess you get the idea. Jean had seen us on TV and he decided to find us. He had ridden alone from the Canadian Arctic Circle to Ecuador in the 80s. He now works as a teacher in Ciudad del Este in Paraguay. There were often indigenous people selling meat from wild animals by the side of the road. Pampero, who used to be a very wild and partly dangerous horse, has after a few thousand kilometers on the road become a very nice and confident horse. The bell you hear in the background is on Bella to try to scare off any snakes around. She got bitten once, but she recuperated very well. Our normal sleeping quarters would be the Mosquitero because of the oppressive heat in the chapel. We made sure that we tucked it in under the horse blankets, which were our mattresses, because of the vampire bats and the snakes around.
road takes its toll on the wildlife in the chuckle that we could see evidence of quite often. Our good Uruguayan friend Pablo came to visit us one day on the road. He lives in Asuncion and he helped us a lot. He even let us stay in his apartment for two weeks while we were there. Our first main destination is the Mennonite colony of Loma Plata, about 450 kilometers away. Even, even if it's tough going, this is the easiest part of the Chaco, because it has scattered cattle ranches and communities along the way. It could still be days of riding between the places, and we were not always welcome. This is lawless territory, and everybody is armed to their teeth. The gates, which could be kilometers away from the ranch houses, would be locked heavily. The owners usually lived in Asuncion, and they didn't allow strangers to enter without their permission. All ranches lose a lot of cattle to cattle thieves. I soon learned that the smart thing was to send Yanya ahead to ask for permission to enter. And when we were allowed, we got to know very nice and interesting people. We also learned that basically all vegetation in the Chaco has thorns, from small ones up to 30 centimeters in length. Therefore the cowboys would uh, very often wear leather clothes and rawhide protection. Imagine that in 40 degrees Celsius and a lot of humidity. The alligators were never far away, and Bella almost got caught one day of one, but she escaped by a hair's breadth. Our first encounter with the vampire bats, a very nasty little thing. The normal way at night to sleep was to bring out the bed, string up the mosquito nets, and if we were lucky, we would get the spare bed as well. The support under the mattresses were, were made up of rawhide strips and it felt quite comfortable at that time in our lives.
The Chaco is also known for its very sudden and heavy thunderstorms. This time we were lucky, we were on the ranch, so we had shelter. Armadillos are not an endangered species and they are very common food in most parts of South America. Don't worry, we didn't hurt the turtle nor the round tattoo. To protect itself, it curls into a ball and it's impossible to pry it open. Very impressive. Just before Loma Plata, after 450 kilometers of riding, we were stopped on the road by Peter Hildebrand. He invited us to stay on a farm they had, which they didn't use at the moment. It was perfect for both us and the horses. The first thing we did was to take new blood samples of the horses and send to Toto Lopez in Asuncion. When we got the results back, it was not good news. All horses except Barra had gotten a disease called pyroplasmosis. They get it from tick bites and it eats away the red blood cells. After the rain, we would sometimes see thousands upon thousands of those butterflies. We got medicine sent from Asuncion and we had a two weeks cure ahead. Anyway, it was at the moment impossible to continue on the next leg of about 500 kilometers because it had not rained for many months. There are no grass or water to be found. We were very well taken care of by the Mennonite community and after many weeks the rain finally came and we could again continue our trip. On the last police outpost, we spent a nice evening where we all got drunk and had a shooting competition. I don't think we hit anything. Annuals. We are now in for the hardest part of the entire trip. In the next 500 kilometers there are only three ranches, some Indian tribes, which you don't see, some drug runners and some police drug squads. Maybe the most dangerous of all. 
We stopped in Estancia Campo Karen and people here were very happy to see some new faces. They had lost more than 40 calves to pumas and jaguars, so they had hired two professional hunters. They just brought in one puma when we arrived and they usually throw the meat to the dogs, but I cut out the tenderloins and we had a delicious puma stew. Next day I was invited to join the hunters to see if we found any big cats. We saw a lot of tracks and signs, but no animals. It was still very exciting though. Indigenous people from a nearby community coming to collect seeds for the next year's crop and to earn a little bit of money. We had now ridden about 200 kilometers from Loma Plata and we were invited to stay on Estancia KDB. This is the last one before 300 kilometers of absolutely nothing towards the Bolivian border. While we were in Loma Plata, Graciana was kicked in the leg by Barra. We thought that she had recuperated, but we had to realize that she wouldn't manage the trip ahead. We had already, just in case, looked at Emir in Loma Plata, so I got a hike with the veterinarian back. We made a deal with the owner of the mare, Jakob Kannenhofen, where we swapped Graciana with the new mare. He and his wife agreed to bring her back to KDB. Now came the time to introduce Shakenya to the family. That went relatively fine and we became very pleased with our new horse. We got a very nice surprise visit and we went to pigeon hunting and we had a fantastic uh, lunch today. Rapatas. Yanya with her new hammock. Homemade in the bosque. Our rain shelter. Last night it was raining and thunder and lightning. No, we were totally on our own, and we didn't expect to see people for the next few weeks. It is terribly hot, around 40 degrees Celsius and so many insects. Because of the heat, we would start riding around 4 in the morning and try to find a place to stop before 10 o'clock. We would change who would ride first because we sometimes got tangled in heavy spider webs in the dark. A very nasty experience. Uh, 
and the beach of the bosque, the beach of the monte is studying the Bible in another new invention. The road, Picada 500, is basically a bulldozed road through the jungle. Very dry in the dry season and very muddy in the rainy season. It's not uncommon for cars to get stuck here for days on end because it can go several days or weeks before the next car comes by. We were now down to the bare basic of survival. The only important things were shadow, grass, water and food. We didn't think about anything else. Final product, real bread, fresh and warm. Is it good, Yanya? Excellent. We never starved, but we were always very hungry and we lost a lot of weight during the trip through the Chaco. Yeah. Today is our lucky day. We were walking down the road and a little deer jumped out of the grass. And my brave hunter husband went after him and killed him. So today we will eat much desired meat. We've been feeding ourselves mostly on corned beef lately.
the meat we were not able to eat at the moment. We cut in strips and dried it in the sun and over the bonfire for later use. Yeah, this is um, Camping La Luna. Cecina is drying, bed is breaking. Breaking? <laughs> Pile, you know what? Bed is baking, water is almost boiling, and that in the pot is our surprise lunch. La cocinera and the lavadera. Lavaropa automática. The Chaco has no rivers, so the only water we could use for drinking and showering was what we found along the road from the last rain. at 6 in the afternoon and at 10 we stopped and Howard and we made ourselves beds from the horse blankets and we slept until 3 and 4 o'clock we left at 5 again thinking to walk 2 or 3 hours maybe and then stop again what happened we didn't find any place so it was already 11 when we stopped under some tree where it was full of thorns and not much grass and there was no water and we were dying of heat. So we decided to go on after an hour or so. And when we got to get Pampero and Bara who were loose, they left. And they left far. So it took us maybe another hour to get them again. It was terribly, terribly hot. They were all sweaty and Pampero took a mud bath so he was completely muddy to put the blankets and the saddle on. But soon after, no, not so soon, maybe two hours later at the most, we found that nice place. There's plenty of birds. I think there are some kind of geese Howard already shot one, but now he's looking for another one, so we will make a little stew. Here, shadow and water and grass. And we are so tired, we think we'll stay here another day. Sometimes I wished we had brought the shotgun on our trip, because it was very difficult to hunt small prey with the Winchester and you must uh, hit the prey in the head or the neck. If not, it would be just minced meat because of the 357 Magnum expanding bullets. Our Cecina started to get kind of whitish of milk, so I put it on a string, we are trying it again. Just like that on the tree. That's the first little goose. It's little, no? <laughs> and Howard first plucked all the fat. Yeah, and then he skinned it. <laughs> it's very easy and dangerous to get lost in the bush, and all the vegetation has torn. Now it's real broken, your shirt. Yeah. We were now close to the Bolivian border and we could see the Andes Mountains for the first time. We still had 150 kilometers of uh, Chaco Boliviano. More of that in the next chapter.